Veronica, welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm very well. How are you, Jamie? Yeah, doing good, doing good. Thanks for making the time, most importantly, to uh, jump on uh, and share some more of your incredible, incredible experience and journey that you've gone on. Uh, I've got lots of questions about the whole My Kitchen Rules thing. I'm a bit of a passionate cooker myself. Is that even a word? A cooker. <laughs> Yes. We'll, just, we'll, we'll, let it, we'll let it roll this time. But I'm, I love cooking, so I've got lots of questions around that. But the listeners, uh, and I gave you a very, very quick um, little briefing on rapid fire. I didn't give you any of the questions, though, didn't I? No, no, no. questions. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Let's do it. All right. Favorite song right now? Favorite song? Oh. <laughs> um... Oh my god, I've got so many. <laughs> All the TikTok ones. Is that TikTok good? songs. I All TikTok right. Songs. I don't I don't have like, TikTok. Like my girls, so okay. <laughs> TikTok music, perfect. Favorite movie. Favorite movie will would have to be um what's the last one that I just watched actually. I've watched all movies on Netflix, so I love Netflix. So whatever's the new releases, I jump on. What was the late, What was the newest? Like, what would be your favorite? I was like, hey, Veronica, like, if I had to watch one movie, like, what would be your go-to suggestion? My go-to would have to be. I really love action movies, so um, I do really like like the Van Damme movies, all that kind of thing. I love it. <laughs> right up my alleyway. <laughs> Love that. Perfect. What's your favorite book? Favorite book? Um, I'm actually listening to a lot of podcasts at the moment and I'm, I just like motivational. Anything mm. that, that's motivational at the moment, um, health and fitness, um, meditation as well, books, you know, that talk about, you know, I'm, I'm actually uh, listening to a podcast, a Tapping Solution, which is all about like meditation um, and how to, you know, set your mind to positive. Uh, yeah, so things like that. I like it. It's right um, up my alleyway. I've been definitely going into more of the audio books and the podcast recently now as well. Um, just gone on a bit of a moment where I'm not really reading physical books. Yes. You know, just really feeling it. You know, I'm tapping more into the 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 podcast and the audio books like you mentioned. So I like that. Tapping Solutions, you said, which was a bit more around the meditation. Is that right? Yeah, Tapping Solutions. Tapping yeah. Solutions. All right. What's your favorite color? My favorite color, I've got two. So red and black. <laughs> red and black. Is red the go-to? Because you said that first. Probably red, yeah. Okay, cool. I love the red lippy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, what's your go-to meal? Go-to meal? Um, it would have to be spaghetti bolognese. Mm. I'm just like, yeah. Uh, I think, you know, we grew up with a lot of pasta and that kind of thing. So, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, favorite TV show? Favorite TV show would have to be Home and Away. <laughs> Home and Away. <laughs> yeah, <we're hooked. laughs> oh, even my girls are watching it now, so you know, seven o'clock, nobody ring, nobody. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even do not disturb <laughs> nothing. Yeah, definitely love that. Home and Away. Honestly, though, seriously, how long has Alf been on that show? I know. <laughs> I know. He's probably on the first episode, yeah, and he'll be on the last one. We actually Good on him. To meet him too. Um, last year, sometime. Um. I I won an auction at a charity event and I got yeah. to take my kids on set to Palm Beach and we got to meet Alf and he actually got my kids to be the background of one of the scenes. Oh, wow. That was really good. There yeah. you go. At least he sounds like a good guy. He's always, he's, he's, uh, he's one-liners. They're like, I think they're globally known. You know? <laughs> Love that. Hey, what was your first job? My first job? Um, my first job was actually at a shoe shop yeah well i used to help my mom out as well my mom used to own a cleaning business so we used yep. to help mom out but my first job on my own was working in a shoe store yes. there you go Retail nice yeah perfect who was your uh biggest celebrity or sporting idol growing up probably angelina jolie mm -hmm. um she was probably someone yeah that i followed loved her movies Love what she stood for. Love mm. that, you know, she used to do a lot of charity work and, and yeah, yeah. She Love was, that. Nice, nice. Yeah. Veronica, tell us your number one pet hate. My number one pet hate? <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird question, but <laughs> probably smell. I am so sensitive at, in smells. Like, 
We have a little puppy dog, a Cavoodle. He's gorgeous. I've never been an animal type person, but I got him for my kids. And look, he's part of the family now, but totally. I just need him to have, be clean all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Daily showers, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, he has to smell nice. Love so, that. Yeah. Love that. All right. I think I know the answer to this one. Book or audio book? Yeah. Okay. Summer or summer or winter? Summer. Summer. Sum up your mindset in one word. Uh, positive. Uh, wake up with a positive mindset and practice your yoga. <laughs> that is the longest one word we have ever received in rapid fire. <laughs> positive. We'll roll, we'll, we'll roll with that. We'll roll with that. Okay, hey, let's... what is something that you haven't done yet that you really want to do though? something that I haven't done. Well, I wanted to jump out of a plane. I've done that. Um, <laughs> good experience. <laughs> yeah, it was a really good experience. Probably travel to more places. Yeah. like. Is there one in particular? Around... Yeah, I'd love to go to Italy, actually. Mm. Um, and I'd love to go to islands like the Maldives or mm. just something, you know. Just... They look so good, don't they? Yeah, Maldives. Love that. Love that. Proudest moment personally and proudest moment professionally. Okay. Personally, um, proudest moment would have to be uh, probably my fitness journey. Um, I've been for a little while, you know, looking after myself and it's not just to lose weight, but it's, you know, to be fit, you know, in the mind and in the body and to keep up with my three crazy kids. (laughs) Totally. (laughs) Well, and professionally would have to be um yeah I, I suppose being on tv being on a mm. tv reality tv show um it was a wonderful experience and i met amazing people and i think yeah it was a long time i was away from home so yeah it was it was quite hard at the time yeah and yeah, looking back now yeah it was probably the proudest moment yeah love that well done well done and we'll definitely dive into a little bit of that uh experience for sure uh tell us something about you that no one knows oh no one knows oh okay yeah i've got a one for you actually i'm a bit of a potty mouth sometimes potty mouth okay <laughs> i love that Everyone sees pageant uh, Princess Veronica, but I can be a bit of a potty mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Behind closed doors and off camera. Yeah, well. Absolutely. I like it. Three, three questions to go. If you could choose to have lunch with any one person, dead or alive, you got a two-hour time limit, who would it be? One. And secondly, where would you have lunch? Oh, okay. Interesting. You know what? I've been uh, obsessed the last probably year with um, Jennifer Lopez. Mm. I don't know why. There's just something about her. And now the fact that she's back with Ben, uh, it's even more obsessive <laughs> yeah. I am. <laughs> totally. I'd love to, <laughs> to yeah. have lunch with her. Okay. And it'd have to be, um, I don't know, somewhere in South America because she is South American. Mm. So, yeah, I think she's Colombian or Cuban, maybe okay. Cuba. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, J Lo. It's funny every time they post a photo, like the whole world like goes crazy. Interesting, isn't it? Good on her. I like it. Two more questions. What was ten-year-old Veronica like? Ten-year-old Veronica was uh, very out there, very outgoing. Um, my mum had to stop me from eating a lot of bread. She didn't <laughs> the bread me. Hide the bread. I love that. <laughs> I really loved bread and um, I was very bossy, I think, since, yeah, since probably that age. Maybe because I was the oldest. (laughs) True. Absolutely. Absolutely. Love that. Last question. Who is your favorite superhero? Favorite super? Wonder Woman, of course. Wonder Woman. (laughs) Of course. Hey, that is rapid fire. Well done. You survived. You did so well. I like it. I like it. Good. Hey, it's a good one. Like I said, I don't want to give you the, the questions early. I don't want you to prepare for it and come up with these, you know, perfect answers. I want them on the spot. I want them on the spot. I like that. Hey, so it's been an incredible journey um, to date and I'm sure there's so much more incredible things you're going to be able to achieve uh, in your life. And, and like I said in the intro, 
you know, mother of three beautiful children. Uh, you've had an impressive, impressive portfolio through your interior design uh, career. Obviously, we're on My Kitchen Rules as well, which is really cool. But I want to touch on and I want to start on, and again, we'll finish on the health journey and a lot of the work you're doing now. And I love the fact that you're sort of gone on the journey yourself and are now going to start passing it on and helping people because I think that's really important because uh, you've sort of felt it step by step. You've felt the ups, you've felt the downs, you've, you know what to do when you don't want to do something. Uh, and then now being able to help people on that uh, aspect is really impressive. But I want to touch on that portfolio around the interior design. Is, like, is that something that you still do? Like, how did you come into interior? Did you study that uh, in uni? Like, how did you fall into that? Yeah, so I studied when I was pregnant with my first child with uh, Thomas. Um, I was doing real estate at the time. And then uh, obviously, we know, when you get pregnant, you can't work certain days. So I thought I'd study and yeah do get into interiors i've always loved um the colors and all that kind of thing so you know when i walked into a property i've always you know like the styling kind of thing totally you know i loved color um yeah so i thought i would do that yeah and work that, on the family business as well yeah definitely definitely did you did you have a particular style that you because I'm, I'm very similar. I love like, you know, looking at different styles, different patterns, different colors, different themes, different making random things match. And my partner even said to me, she's like, Jamie, like you got the weirdest dress sense, but it works. Like you look good, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know if that reflects into, you know, interior design, but yeah, like what was your style? Like, did you have a particular theme that you always went with? Did you have red everywhere? No, well, I'm actually very Monaco. Um, I'm very simple. I like things to be really, really plain, but then you can add colour to it. Mm. So you can add your own taste, you know, on top of, yeah, uh, colour. So I'm, I'm not a colourful girl. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah. you won't see me in, you know, all different colours. Um, totally. I like to matchy, matchy match. I'm a bit yeah. of a matchy matchy. Um, <laughs> We should have been born in America. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Matchy matches. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's sort of my style. I, I like very classic. Yeah. Uh, that kind of, kind of style. What's in fashion now? Like what what's what, what's what's trending now, so to say, on TikTok um, or like just in the world of interior design and what what's relevant now? Um, I think well, classic is always relevant, and you know your Monaco colors is always. But I'm, I'm finding at the moment, obviously, because I've got a teenage daughter. Um, they love the fluoros and mm. you know, and the lilacs and all those kind of colors. They're really in at the moment, um, which can go like it, it, it's actually really good because she's total opposite to me. So <laughs> she makes me bring in some color into what I like. So totally. I start steering into that kind of thing as well. But is it, do you reckon that's like a long term? Like- like you said, like the, the classical lasts forever, like it's always relevant, but this whole neons and fluoros and, you know, in 10 they're years' in time, out. it may not be... Yeah, they're in and out. Yeah, you're going to have to repaint your house. Yes, that's right. I, re- I remember my parents, only a couple of years ago, they renovated the ensuite, but they and they built the house like back in late 80s and they had like the, like a pink like salmon bench top. You know, I was like, wow, like is that what you thought was cool back then? Like, that's disgusting, you know? <laughs> Your browns and you know your burgundies, all that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Old homes, you know your red brick homes. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm yeah. You'll ask me to this day, Veronica. What's something you know? What color can we can we do on the outside of our house that's going to stay in? You know, so you go for you know your your greys and those kinds totally. of totally that you know just don't date. Totally, yeah, no, they, they definitely needed to renovate that ensuite because yeah. um, <laughs> the salmon bench top was not working. Was not working. I love that. Awesome. So, hey, I want to talk a little bit more about My Kitchen Rules because that was probably one of my... If I ever had to watch TV, I watch sport, anything sport-related, and probably like a cooking show, something like that. Um, how did that come about? Like, did you audition for it? Did you right place, right time? Like, did you always uh, want to be on a cooking show? Like, how did that happen? Well, I've been on a TV show before, and it was obviously... Um, it was Hot Property, so it was mm. all about, you know, a home. We were selling a home at the time. Um, so, I've been on TV before and I've always done, you know, adverts and mm. promotional work and that sort of thing. I've always been in that sort of industry, but it was always just for fun. Um, and I I thought, you know what, let's apply for a reality TV show. You know, you see it and it looks like so much fun. Absolutely. Um, and I love cooking too, you know. Um, my parents are South American and my mum loves cooking and, you know, my grandmother used to teach me how to make like yorkies and things like that. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go on there. 
um, and give it a go. So I applied and um, yeah, it was when I applied because we were beauty pageant, ex beauty pageant queens. Um, yeah, they had never had, you know, queens before on the show. So it, it pretty, it sold pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. They brought to it pretty quickly and they saw a yeah. spot for you guys. I like it. So did you have any reservations with, like, did you ever like think, nah, I'm not going to do it? Or were you like just all in, like, I'm doing it. Like, I'm going to apply. I'm going for it. Did you ever think maybe this is not for me? Yeah, probably when we were just about to leave to go into what you call lockdown and yeah. you know, that bubble. <laughs> just leaving the family, I think. Yeah. You know, because I had, you know, three kids and, you know, my family and I had to leave them and I really didn't know how long I was going for mm. and when I was going to see them, that was probably the hardest part of it all that made me think, am I doing the right thing? But, mm. you know, besides that, no, I just wanted something different. Yeah, totally. I, think- I like it. I like it. What was, um, what was Manu and Pete like? Uh, Pete and Manu, they were, <laughs> well, Manu's very funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, you know, he really does, like they say, bring uh, uh, bring the party alive. <laughs> totally. <laughs> with all his little jokes and, you know, his accent and that kind of thing. So we always had a good laugh with him. Um, till this day, you know, always follow him in all his reality TV shows. Totally, yeah, yeah. Um, and Pete too. Look, Pete knows so much about food and obviously, mm. you know, he was in the restaurant business and he had Hugo's and, you know, he knows so much about that industry and, you know, very professional, uh, you know, he does his job and, yeah, he cracks a few jokes here and there. Totally. Um, but he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're two very different characters, two very different, very um, different. play different roles. Well, they do really well together. Absolutely. Like, you know, um, and I think, you know, he's Pete's more serious and yeah. you know, more the fun. So that's why it, it works. It worked, yeah. I've got a lot of respect for, for both of them, but definitely for Pete Evans, because obviously he's in the media for a lot of the reasons, sometimes not the best reasons, yes. um, but he stands for what he like. He believes in, you know, he doesn't back down, he doesn't, you know, which is, res- you've got to respect someone of that calibre uh, who stands by their word, you know. Yeah, um, he just doesn't play it up for the cameras, like that's no. him and, and yeah. Yeah. What's it like behind the scenes? Like, is it, I guess we don't, TV watching from home, you don't see anything, but like there's, does everyone get along? Does does no one talk? Like, do you still have friendships and relationships or is there like little fights going on in the background? Like what's happening? Well, I made some really good friends. Um, awesome. You know, but obviously, you know, just like, you know, life, you don't get along with everybody. Absolutely. And, you, know, you know, some people don't get along and some people don't talk, but then, you, you know, you do find relationships that you gel with. And, you know, till this day, I still go and visit Melbourne and all my MKR, you know, friends, you know, I, I'm quite close with Bianca um, and Jennifer and the girls. Um, and, you know, I just look forward to going to Melbourne and visiting them. Um, also Queensland. So that's the best part of it all is having friends all over, you know, each state. 100%. Um, yeah, definitely go and visit them and obviously not everyone's going to get along and that's just life. Like but I said, that's reality. That's life. It's <laughs> what you deal with every single day, uh, not just on TV. And, and you mm. just to, you know, uh, what you're doing as well on the show. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. What was your biggest takeaway from the whole experience? Like even from a personal journey, like what did you learn? One about yourself, but you know, what, what did it do for you on a personal perspective? Not so much like what doors did it open for other uh opportunities but more like what did it give you i think for me personally um i don't know it just gave me perspective about life because you it's two different worlds you know you're in this little bubble and you're doing your own thing and yeah it was great and great experience and i learned so much about food and cooking and but also i learned about myself like the simple Mm. things uh are actually the best things and I think when I came out of there it was like you know I came out and I really appreciated you know my family my kids not that I didn't before but it was just it was different it was yeah I I don't know how how to explain it actually um but it was like I was uh getting to know Veronica all over again because you do have time to yourself you're alone a lot of the time as well um, and you really think about what you want in your life. Would you say that 
now just listening to what you said there like would you say that it's it's a it was a a, like a benefit to have that alone time to really think because we're normally like go 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 like non-stop obviously pre-lockdown time you know we're always here there and everywhere Definitely. And I think me, myself, because I've always been go, go, go since I was young, you know, I've always had three jobs. I've always been out there, very social. Um, I think I needed that for myself as well, Mm. because it's like you lose yourself a little bit in all the craziness around you. Um, And, you know, just being a mother as well, um, being a wife and, you know, you you really get perspective on what you really want in life. Mm. Um, So, yeah. That's was it, what I took away from it all. Love that. Was it hard at the start, that whole slowing down, being isolated, being on your, not isolated, yeah. like, but being on your own? Like, was it hard at the start to adapt to that, but then it sort of got easier, would you say? Yeah, yeah. At, at the beginning, it was really, really hard um, being on your own. Yeah, you have your partner there, um, your cooking partner, but yeah, yeah it's, it's like you have no one else. Totally. <laughs> And, and the reason I ask that is because like most people would say, yeah, you know what? I want to have some alone time. Like I really want to do the whole me thing. And they get one minute in and like, oh my God, this is too weird. This is different. Like, yeah. And then they go back to what's normal. Exactly. Well, it, I suppose it's just like COVID, right? What, exactly what right. experiencing now. And it is like a reset button, like everyone mm. says. It's yeah. like you, you press a reset button and you have time to think about everything. Mm. Um, yeah. And, I, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. I think Absolutely. we have to sometimes stop and just, yeah, just stop and think about and just watch the world and, you know, totally. um, yeah. Realign to, like you, like you said, you got a new perspective. So you, you, you went there with a new perspective, but then if you didn't do that sort of self-work, like you would have gone back and that new perspective would have just been thrown in the bin. Yes. You've now got this new perspective. It's like, well, how can I live to that new lifestyle? How can I live to this new vision and these new goals and these new needs and these new wants that I have? based on that time away, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. So and I felt, happy too, because, you know, everyone deserves to be happy and do what exactly you right. like as well. Exactly right. And again, that, that's, that's the crazy thing, and well, not crazy, but, you know, you, you go into a career, you go into a job, you start a business for whatever reason, thinking that this is what I want to do, and then a year later, two years later, three years later, 10 years later, you realize, well, hey, this is not in alignment with who I am anymore. You know, I've had this life-changing experience. I've had this trauma. I've had this TV show experience. I've had this alone time. We've had lockdown. We've had family, this person communication here. I don't want to be there anymore. And that's totally fine. If, Like you said it then, like if it's not what brings you happiness, so to say. Exactly. Um, I think as we get older, you know, we change as a person. 100%. As well. You know, we want different things and, and there's nothing wrong with that as well. Agreed. And like you said, it was it was the small things. It was the simple things that really you know hit home for you when you were able to head home, so to say. Yeah. Um, and you and that personally for me, that's been a mass like during this lockdown because I was very similar again into last year when we first hit lockdowns. It was go 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 traveling. I was in my own bed for like one week a month, two weeks a month because wow. I was always out and about. So then to be able to be home for a month, two months, well, pretty much all of last year in Melbourne, yeah. you know, and then even so even again now this year, yeah, you really do start to shift and you know, respect things differently, understand things, appreciate, be grateful for different things, the smallest things, you know. Um, I think we could... Like just going down to the beach, right? Absolutely, yeah. For, for us here in Melbourne, like we'd love the ability to do that. Uh, even if we weren't in lockdown, we don't have the weather for it anyway, so I'm not too bummed about that because um, we don't even really go much anyway. But, but yeah, just having the freedom to be able to do that is completely, yeah. you know, a whole different level of, you know, appreciation for that. So um, I, I really... I like that response from you there because it's like, yeah, what was your biggest takeaway? Oh, I was on TV. I was about to meet Pete Evans and Manu and you know, all that sort of crazy stuff. But it was more, you took that personal experience from it, the personal growth yeah. from it. Yeah. Um, would you say that sort of led into the journey now of the whole health and wellness and working on the mental health and having seeing it all sort of tie together? Like, was that a bit of a catalyst to really drive that? 100%, 100%, especially um, mental health. I think... Um, yeah, it, it, it took its toll, um, you know, missing your family and, you know, you're in this bubble and yeah. um, obviously you're surrounded by people, but, you know, they're not your family, not your totally. friends. Um, so I think all of that, you know, had a toll and, you know, you're not, 
it's different when you're in that little bubble, you know, you're not eating, you know, yeah. or obviously, we, you know, we're on a cooking show. So we're just eating what we're cooking and things like that. It wasn't, yeah, it was, it was quite full on physically as well for the body. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. So I came out of there. Um, I was never a big girl, but I came out of there. Um, I had put on a little bit of weight, but it wasn't just about the weight that I had put on. It was more about um, my body, you know, um, not having enough energy as well. Mm. And like I explained, you know, I need to, I've got three kids, so I need to keep up with them. <laughs> And they're very active as well. <laughs> totally. Dancers and, you know, <laughs> doing all these things. That, Absolutely. Yeah. So, again, I'm, I'm loving, like, your biggest takeaways because, again, like you said, the personal journey. But now it's like, okay, cool. Well, I came out having put on a bit of weight. I came out realizing that my energy levels weren't where they were or where they really need to be. So then what happened there? Did you sort of say, okay, cool, I need to go and learn more about health and wellness or did you just – throw yourself into the deep end and said, hey, I'm going to join the gym. I'm going to look after myself first. Like, how did that whole process yeah, begin? Right. I just um, joined the gym. So I joined F45. Yep. Um, and I went straight in for the challenge. Um, at the time, they had just started their challenges. Um, and I thought it was amazing. So I didn't just do the gym. I also did their food program as well. Nice. So I started and, you know, coming off a cooking show, you think that I would just like relax, right? And not cook. But I started, <laughs> <laughs> I started cooking all over again, but it was just different because it was, mm. you know, it was for health reasons as well. You know, um, I wanted to tap into that kind of thing as well. And, you know, F45 was just amazing. It was brilliant. You know, the, the operator behind that is is amazing. Absolutely. So, um, and even if you didn't want to cook, you've got, you know, your pack meals and all that kind of thing. But I think I just wanted to still stay on that little bit of journey, you know, uh, with the cooking side of things as well. Nice. I do have a family and I've always been the cook in the house. So, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I just went missing again for five months. <laughs> <laughs> they would have Love that. Them. <laughs> that. with i guess with that side of it what what have you seen as the biggest you know benefit from to you personally from looking after the physical health and then as well as the the, the mental health and then the, the food that you're putting in like what has been the i know there's probably a hundred different benefits but if you had to say look jamie this is probably the biggest one that i've really benefited from and it's really impacted my life and made change what would you say that is i think just feeling comfortable in your own shoes you know mm. knowing that you know, you've got that energy, you know, that you, you can keep up and, you know, you're not um, feeling tired or, you know, also too, obviously, you know, when you're not feeling good about yourself is when, you know, bad habits come in, you know, you start drinking and, you know, things like that. And I think yeah. I just needed to really cleanse myself. Mm. And I thought that was the only way of doing it is just going straight into it. Um, I'm not saying, you know, didn't drink or I didn't, you know, eat any junk food or anything. There is a balance and moderation with everything. And I still totally. believe that to this day, um, you know, you need to still, you know, have fun and whatever your body craves, I think you have to, yeah, you, you have to keep that balance. Totally. Um, it's not just about, you know, don't do this and don't do that. You know, um, we're all human and mm. we all also, you know, yeah, deserve to have a bit of fun and, and a bit of, yeah, totally. Whether it be the sweets or whether it be like you said, alcohol or whatever it may be. Uh, like I said, in moderation, there's a nice balance pizza. there. <laughs> oh, absolutely, pizza, a hundred percent. But that's the thing though, because like, if you're not enjoying it, then you're going to resent it. And then as soon as the diet, the the little program, the challenge is over, you're going to go back to your old ways because you hated what you were doing for four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, twelve weeks, whatever the you know program was. Exactly. Um, so you're better off getting into a rhythm that you enjoy. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and you said being comfortable in your own shoes, like, you know, the whole confidence thing was, was that something that you lacked or was that something that you sort of always had, but this really brought more of it? I've always had that, but I think, yeah, I think I brought more, more of that as in maybe, maybe it was a, a body image thing. It could have been too. Um, also because. I'm getting older as well. I've always had a problem with my age. <laughs> Ask my mum. No. <laughs> um, so I just feel that, yeah, um, it just brought more confidence um, for myself. Okay. For, for, a, for a, let's say there's a mum listening um, and 
they want to get into health and fitness, but they're not too sure. Where would you say is a good spot to start? But I guess ultimately for them, would you say like confidence is the underlying reason, foundation, you know, why as to why 99% of people actually even go to the gym, want to, you know, make changes? 100% has to be confidence. Um, mm. um, that's why probably a lot of people do stall and don't want to, you know, join a gym. And look, you don't necessarily have to join a gym. Exactly right, yeah. You can work from home. Um, I've got a gym set up at home as well. And I actually love working out at home as well. Um, I don't go to the gym all the time. Mm. Um, and I just think that, that yeah, it, it's definitely confidence uh, for everyone and especially mothers as well. You know, we have, we you know, especially the mums that have kids, um, they put their body through hell. Totally. You know, yeah. And yeah. it does take take us a little bit of time because, you know, we don't focus straight away on, you know, building our bodies and getting healthy and, and losing that weight. You know, our first priority is our children. Totally. You know, so, you know, we always leave that to the back burner. Um, but I, I did that too. But I think, you know, um, I think mothers have to also look after themselves as mm. well. How did you make that transition? Like you said, you always put your kids first, put yourself last, give them the good food, you eat the leftovers. Like how did you, not so much put them last, but how did you start to shift in your mindset that I need to look after myself so I can be a better version of me for my family, for my kids, for my friends, for my, for my customers, everything? Yeah, I, I think the shift probably came after the show mm -hmm. um, as well. Like after, you know, I left and then came back. I thought to myself, you know what, if I'm not healthy and happy within myself, how can I do that for my family? Totally. You know, um, so that's when it all sort of clicked, you know, and, and they see me now and they see me train and it's actually really good for them as well to see Absolutely. That, that, you know, mum wants to look after herself, you know, she wants to, you know, be healthy and, and, and also too, if we're not healthy and happy, then that's when, you know, you know, things can go wrong. Agreed. Um, yeah. Agreed. And I think you're setting a really good example for them that, you know, not that you're putting, well, you are in a way putting yourself first, but you're looking after yourself first so that you can go then and be the best version of yourself. You know, you're, you're not letting your health and wellness and mental health fall behind because it sort of is better for someone else. Yes. You know, right. um, and I think personally, I, I've seen that maybe become, it, it's sort of gone both ways. It's sort of this big, great divide. A lot of people have started to look after themselves during lockdown and they have really gone down the self-development route and are coming out of it better versions of themselves. And unfortunately, there's another group of people who for a lot of, and a lot, a lot, a lot of an unlimited amount of external reasons have sort of gone the opposite way and haven't looked after themselves and are in this really dark spot yeah. that they're yeah. sort of trying to live through. And again, it is the most challenging time ever you know, that we're sort of facing now. Yeah. Being a mum, you know, at home, kids homeschooling, still working out from home. I'm sure there's a lot on the plate, especially like while you guys are there are facing lockdowns. Like how do you get through the day? Like what, what, what's your internal dialogue? Like what's your mindset around like the mental health side of it to help you go through and fight another day during these challenging times? Um, you know what? <laughs> I listen to my body. So as much as, you know, you want to, you know, have a good day, if you're not having a good day, then I think what people do is fight not having a good day, right? And I think you just need to go with it. So if I don't feel like, you know, I am not going to work out that day or, you know, I don't feel like doing yoga or, you know, um, eating something, I just listen to my body. So, mm. um, but then obviously you need to, it, it, it's it's quite difficult because you need to change your mindset too because you can't totally. have that every day, right? Absolutely. Okay, so obviously if I'm feeling like that, then the next day I'll set an alarm and I'll go, you know what, I'm going to wake up today, fresh, 7 o'clock, and I'm going to do my yoga in the morning before all the kids get up. <laughs> Yeah. Um, just so then I feel refreshed and then I can train and do what I need to do, get things ready, get food. Because especially in lockdown, like, you know, they normally go to school. So I do all my running around and everything. Now now I'm cooking like three meals. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Breakfast. And yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you know, lunch. And now, you know, they don't expect just a sandwich. They're just like, oh, mom, what are we having for lunch? And I'm just like... <laughs> Four course meal for lunch. Absolutely. <laughs> Love that. So, you know, just getting, um, and I, I have learned a few little tricks, you know, um, also to going through all of this. Um, and if you do need help, I think it, it's no shame asking for help, like from mm. psychologists or things like that. So I do meet with a psychologist as Love well. That. Love that. Help with my mental state of things as well. Yep. Because as much as, you know, you say you're okay, everyone's going through a hard time. 100%. And also too, they change your mindset and they say, you know what, Veronica, you know, try this and mm. do this. And that's so good because it's, it's someone giving you input from the outside. So, Absolutely. you know, she said, you know, when you wake up in the morning, nice and fresh, write yourself a list, list on what you want to do during the day. Mm. And that has really, really helped me, especially, you know, um, you know, through the day being so busy with three kids and doing other things as well. Yeah. Love that. Love that. I like what you said there about like sort of embracing the down moment or the not feeling like I want to train today moment and not trying to fight it. Like, let it be. You know, because like you said, we're all human. There's going to be those moments where you don't want to do what you really need or should be doing. Um, but embrace that. You know, don't try and push it into the corner and bury it. Embrace it. But then like you said, I love what you said as well. There's the next day it's seven o'clock alarm or whatever time alarm and let's get it. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. What's your sort of internal dialogue with yourself? Like how do you, what's your self-talk like? And the reason I ask this, Veronica, is this is something that I've sort of, this is a little journey I've gone on during lockdown and working on myself because I'm very critical of myself. I set such a high standard for myself. Everything needs to be spot on. I'm so hard on myself and yeah. I'm trying to unpack that languaging and shift some of the languaging to be more, you know, nice to myself, so to say, yes. you know, because again, like it's the only voice you hear 24 seven, your own voice. So how do you talk to yourself? Like, how do you, what languaging do you use to get yourself up or what, what, mantras affirmations what language do you use when you're feeling down or yeah like what probably, goes through your mind probably in terms of that um language i think silence is actually better um and that's where i think yoga has really helped me because it mm. is a time of meditation i think switching off the switch off button just going into meditation and just not thinking about anything, I think really helps. So yes, of course, you, you know, if you wanna, you know, self-talk and, and motivate yourself and, you know, you've got the podcast, you've got, you know, books or you, you can, even social media, you know, mm. you've got your, you know, even your daily horoscopes, <laughs> you know, motivate totally. you as well, you know. Totally. You're, and you're, wow. Um, but I think switching off, is very good because it's like it's like you're clearing your mind mm. and then you reset. I like that. I yeah, like that. I, think, I think that would be good for you, Jamie. I think. I, I you know, think so too. Yeah. <laughs> I like what you said there about the whole like silence is you know like just switching off when it gets a bit loud, um, when there's a lot happening, a bit full. Yes. I like that. Again, me meditation is something that I'm not amazing at, um, but it's definitely something I have been doing more often. Uh, yeah. I listen to a lot of Joe Dispenza at the moment. So I'm doing a lot of you know meditation work and mindset work and listening to that. Because you're always on a journey. You're always on a learning journey. There's That's always right. something to learn. Um, you know, A year ago, I never thought I'd be listening to anything like this. Yeah, um, same, same. But, but it's funny how all these things sort of come into your life at the right time. You know, And this, content, this content's been there for, for a long time, but only now it's in my world, um, which, is, which is really cool. What would you say, Veronica, are sort of three of your top habits, three things that you do on a daily basis that gets you, you know, in the mode, in the mood, in the, in the state that you need to be to be the mum, be the chef for cooking for everyone, you know, <laughs> exercising, you know, putting content out there, inspiring, motivating your followers. What do you do? What are your top three things? Top three things. Okay. Um... Well, I would say, yeah, like I said before, yoga, like I'd have to start with a clear mind. So just totally switch off. It's funny because I totally switch off and then I get back into it. So I, I would train straight after 
Um, because I think if you do have that switch off button, you might not turn it back on. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Before you know it, it's like 6 p.m. and it's like still, still, still meditating. <laughs> yeah. um, and I would train and, yeah, just just sit down and, and just have a list on what you want to accomplish on mm. that day or even if you don't want to do anything that day, just still have that list for tomorrow or for the next totally. day. Yeah. So yoga slash switch off, then exercise, then like action list, to-do list, list of tasks to get done. Uh, like that. I like that. Are you big on to-do lists? Like is, like, is that like a, a must-have now for you? Um, I used to be. I used to be a, a more to-do list than what I am now. I yeah. still have one. Yeah. But I'm more, uh, I'm more kind to myself now. I like it. Uh, I yeah, like it. I'm yeah. Kind to myself, so I don't stress if I don't get that done. Yeah. Um, and I think in the mornings is when your mind is clear as well. So I think that's the time to probably write a to-do list. But totally, yeah, you don't have to do it straight away. Absolutely. Because uh, I also like you know spending time with the children. You know, after they finish, we we love to have dinner, and then you know, like I said before, we love watching Home and Away. Like <laughs> that's my downtime. So I don't want to have to be thinking. You know, at six o'clock, I have to do this and I have to do that. That's I want to switch off then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Turn off the computer. Turn everything off. Yeah. Log out. I like that. One yeah. thing I've always believed and sort of share with my clients is, you know, if you write a to-do list, to whatever you want to call it, action list, task list, whatever, you know, and you get whatever done and you don't get something done, it's okay because if you really needed to get it done, you would have done it. So That's for whatever right. reason. Put at the top of the list. <laughs> totally for whatever reason you yeah. haven't done it and you can just do it tomorrow yeah because if you really needed to get it done or it was like urgent like life-changing you would have done it yeah you know yeah. so that's and that's the mindset that i've sort of developed over the last few years and it's been the best like i might get to the end of the night and there's three things that i haven't done from today but well, that's okay because looking at them i didn't really need to do it today it's totally fine if i do it tomorrow all good let's move it to tomorrow log off for the day yeah. you know uh, and one thing that I don't know, you tell me as well, like through your experience, I think everyone's trying to like create like this perfect life where everything they say they're going to do today, they do. They're going to exercise, they're going to eat well, they're going to talk well, they're going to communicate well, they're not going to get upset, they're going to meditate, they're going to do that, they do everything. <laughs> but really, like through all the episodes I've done and all the amazing people I've had the chance to talk to, I don't think there's ever a perfect day. Would you agree? I agree. Yeah, there's never a perfect day. Yeah. You can do meditation, you can exercise. And you know the kids do something, and you can still scream. A hundred percent. Yeah, or you know you get a phone call, and guess what? You know you've got this appointment. Oh damn! But, yeah, yeah. And like we said, then it's about being be more, be more kind to yourself and realizing that this shit happens. Yeah. You know, I think the biggest thing there is like, what do you do when that happens? Like, how do you respond? That's the true sort of measure of the character and of the person in those moments when it's not working. How do you bounce back? Like, what do you do to start feeling better? Um, then talk to us a little bit more about the health and the wellness because I really want to understand more of what you're going to be doing there because uh, I know you're going on a bit of a journey now. You're studying a lot deeper uh, and probably later this year, if not early next year, you're going to be really passing it on through some different programs. Like, what makes you sort of want to give it back? Like, what experience have you had from it that like just said, I need to pass this on, I need to teach this? Um, I think it's the transformation. For me, um, you know, in the last couple of years uh, that I've had, um, and I'd love to share that with others as well. So, in in saying that, I also um, did a course. So, I've just finished a fitness coaching course um, nice. with the Australian Institute of Fitness, um, which has been amazing. And even that, there you go. Like, you know, I, I signed up for the master personal training course and, you know, so much has happened for me in the last couple of months, you know, change of job, you know, everything, you know, the kids, lockdown. Um, so I couldn't like finish off the whole course, but I did do Cert 3, which is basically all I want to do now because I do awesome. want to get in to do other courses as well. Exactly. Um, I'd love to uh, do some more in yoga, learn a little bit about that and get into the meditation as well. Mm. So I'm looking into um, a meditation called Tapping Solution, which is, you know, more the mind, 
and it, it's quite big in I think in the UK and America. Okay. And yeah, so I want to, yeah, I want to do other things now. So I, I like think it. it's all worked out for the best. It's so, it's funny. I was about to say it's it's funny how these things work out. Um, in the moment, you sort of like, why isn't it working? Why can't I do my masters? I'm gonna make it work, and then two months later, six months later, you're like, wow, that's perfect. I get to do these other aspects now, um, yeah. and really help on, on another level. What would you say, you know, right now in the current climate or even, you know, even pre-COVID is some of the biggest challenges people are facing? Obviously, mental health is very, very big um, at the moment. Um, and just finding the drive. I think people are just giving up because we don't know what's around mm. the corner, which is quite scary, you know, Absolutely. for everyone. And, Agreed. you know, uh, yeah, so I think that's the big challenge at the moment. Yeah. Um, but I think if if people just, you know, just stick to what they're doing yeah. um, and, you know, every day is a new day and, you know, like I said before, it's like a reset button and mm -hmm. we just, you know, just try to be kind to ourselves. I like that. I yeah. like that. I think, yeah, finding the drive, I completely agree. I like the way you worded that because it, it is the unknown. It's... This yeah. week we're in lockdown, next week we're out. This news outlet said this, the next outlet said that, this media place said this. So many mixed messages and it's, yeah, it is hard to find that get up and go. And um, that's probably another another thing that I would say too, like the media out there, like there's all so many different stories and I mm. think people need to sometimes not, you know, listen. Obviously we need to know what's going on. Absolutely. But sometimes we've got to switch off from that too because I, I find that that even gets to people. Totally. Um, totally. So, you know, do something else, read, uh, catch up on your movies or just... Listen know. to podcasts like this. You know. Yeah, listen yeah, to podcasts. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Colors. I, I, I can't believe I've had time to clean out all my colors. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. You've cleaned them out four times. That's how, that's how much time you got. I like it. But yeah, just yeah. I think even doing the like the list and you know having some sort of routine, and even though it may not be the usual routine of get up and go to work and that side of things, but create your own new routine, a new life routine. Look at it as a new opportunity to create a better version of yourself and like a version of you that you never thought you'd be able to do because now you've got all this time up your sleeve. Like, what can you do for yourself and your family? Uh, I think that's a really good way to to look at it. What have been you know some of your best life lessons, Veronica, over the journeys and for those are many amazing things that you've been able to achieve. Like, what would you say some of your top life lessons you've, you've had? Um, life lessons, probably keeping a balance, um, you know, with everything. It's so hard and um, no, I haven't achieved it. I don't think anybody will ever achieve, a, a, you know, a perfect balance. But, you know, trying is, you know, trying to have that balance with everything. I think has been, yeah, a big thing. Love that. Love yeah. that. If I said to you, uh, as we sort of wrap it up, um, you know, I've got a few more questions for you, but this has been incredible. I really appreciate your, your input and, and just a different perspective of someone who's, you know, been on TV and lived that lifestyle and seen what it sort of is and, you know, been through the whole thing and then come out of it and said, cool, this is where I've gone from that. Um, I really appreciate, you know, the, the honesty and the rawness and the, you know, the openness <laughs> over this last hour um what would you say there's you know now hindsight beautiful thing looking back what's something you wish you knew now that you know or you wish you knew 10 years ago that you can pass back to your yourself 10 years ago oh that's a really good question <laughs> <laughs> um probably patience <laughs> Yeah, to be patient um, because obviously we want everything like today, right? Or yesterday. <laughs> I think, you know, there's no race to anywhere. Really, we don't know. <laughs> True. So I think being patient, I think if I, yeah. I like that. There's no, no race. Happen, there's no race to anywhere. <laughs> but you know why I like that is because if you think about it, I guess everyone listening right now, five years ago, let's put aside, let's go five years ago to 2019 pre-lockdown because I guess no one in 2015 thought in 2020 we'd be in lockdown, right? Yeah. But, you know, five years prior to 2019, were you doing what you thought you were going to be doing? No. <laughs> I definitely wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't, you know. So, like, 
I love that. Like, what's the right, like, where are we, like, why are you racing f- towards? Yeah. Yes, have a vision, have a goal. Absolutely, have the, the vision board. Of course, like, have that. Yeah. But there's going to be so many obstacles. There's going to be so many detours, different path, different road, speed humps, challenges that come up. Yeah, I love that. I don't know. I just have my own little <laughs> sort of, you know, it's like a race to nowhere. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's not even a race. Like you're going on your own journey. Like you're not competing, you know. Exactly. Who are you competing with? Yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to write that down. That's gold. That might be the, the podcast title, A Race to Nowhere. <laughs> it's so true though. If you look at it from like all angles and all perspective, it is. I like that. Hey, Veronica, second last question for me. If I was to say to you, what does be great mean to you? What would you say? Being great to me would be being kind. I think kind to yourself, kind to others, kind to your family, even kind to your enemy. Like even if, yeah, the person's being a pain in the ass. <laughs> totally. They <laughs> say, you know, yeah, be great like and kind. I like that. Was that, a, was that a skill that you always had, being kind, trying to be kind to people? Or is that something you've worked yeah. on recently? Yeah, no, I've always had that. I like yeah. that. I like that. I like that. Veronica, this has been incredible. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time um, to, to put this together and really give back uh, in a really challenging time that we're all sort of facing. Uh, so like I said, I, I really do appreciate it. Where would be the best spot for people to connect with you, learn some more, because I, I would definitely suggest following you on your journey. Like you post some really incredible content. Uh, I'm not just saying that because you're here right now, uh, it's but it's, nice. you know, oh, honestly, I, I, I do. Look, you, the whole health and fitness and the journey you're going through and the, and the rawness that you put out there, um, there's no bullshit. Like it's just, this is how it is. Yeah. And I love that. So where would be the best spot for people to find? Um, I've got Instagram. Yep. Um, I've also got, I've just started a TikTok, which is really good because it's a fitness, like an inspo mum fitness TikTok, uh, which has been really good. So I, I, I'm starting to post also some of my routines, nice. uh, my transformations, love that that kind of thing. And love that. My, my kids are teaching me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I like it. <laughs> totally. I like that. I think it was something that I said off air as well. I might have said it right at the start was like, yeah, you've gone on the health and journey uh, your health and fitness journey, but you've done it first yourself and now you're going to be able to pass it on. Like you haven't just read a book and then said, hey, well, this is what the book said. This is what you need to do. It's like, no, I've, I'm living it. I'm, I'm going through it. I've, I've faced the up times, the down times, and now you're passing it on through all these different platforms, which I think is incredible. So again. And I've got to give credits to my personal trainer as well because it <laughs> yeah. wasn't because of her. I, yeah, I wouldn't even probably have done the course as well, but she really inspired me as well. And, you know, she passed it on to me and that's why Love I that. want to pass it on to others as well. See the power of having the right people around you, yeah. you know, having your own little network, your own community, your own little team totally. and tribe, you know, it, it definitely makes a, plays a big part, plays a big part. But I'll make sure I put all the um, the, the details in the show notes. So if, you, so if you're listening or watching, you'll be able to click on the description and you'll see uh, the Instagram links and the, the, the TikTok links, even though I'm not on TikTok, but I'll somehow figure out how to put a link on there. Um, <laughs> Start. I should start. I should post the podcast on TikTok. Who knows? Um, but again, Veronica, I really appreciate it. Thank you for making some time today to, uh, to jump on. Uh, and for everyone else out there who's tuned in, thank you. And we will catch you on the next episode. Bye for now. 